fellow vintage lovers. I left this morning to drop off some eBay packages at the post office and ended up going to two local thrift stores. One of them I kind of consider my honey hole, um, although pricing has started to increase there. So I'm wondering if uh, they've, they've realized that a lot of people are going there to resell. It is a charity shop, so I'm happy to continue going there, but some of their prices have now gotten outside of my price range as far as reselling. But I did find a few things there today. And the other thrift store I went to, it's it's very iffy. Sometimes I find stuff, sometimes I don't. It's it's large, but it's mainly clothing. It's very popular for clothing here in Dallas. But I wanted to start off this video with this. This, I believe, is a celluloid vanity dish. I'm not 100% sure on that. That's what it looks like to me. I'm definitely going to do more research on this. I think it's beautiful. Of course, I love the amber color. I have not cleaned it yet. This is the first time I've purchased celluloid this old. I believe this could be from the 20s or 30s. So I need to do a little bit more research before I try to clean it. I just don't want to damage it. Um, it's absolutely stunning. I don't know if this is shell. I don't think it is. I think it's decorated to look like a shell. But look at that. It's just so cool. So that was my favorite find today. I also picked up this Fenton Hobnail toothpick holder. I've seen it listed as a votive holder as well. Um, and an egg cup. I'm not sure about that. I, I would call it a toothbrush. Toothpick holder. But I just think it's very pretty. Um, as you can see, it's amber. And it does have hobnail and scallop design. It's called the Colonial Pattern, I believe. I also picked up this very pretty dish from the 1960s. This is Bartlett Williams and... This pattern is, is called Manhattan. This is the first time I picked up a Bartlett Williams piece, and I love it. I think it's so pretty. I hope the color's picking up. It is um, a very light green. I would call it avocado green. I just think it's beautiful, and obviously it's a serving bowl of some sort. I also picked up two plates, and this is the first time I picked up collector plates like this. I thought these were really cute. This cat is Royal Dalton, and it's a series called Cats in the Window, and her name is Agniatha. Uh, the plate is in perfect condition. There's no wear, no chips or cracks, and I thought it was perfect for spring. I don't know. I figured there might be some cat lover friends out there that might be interested in that. And the other dish I picked up was this. This is Danbury Mint, I believe. Yes. And it's called Three Little Kittens uh, from the collection entitled Perfect Portraits. I just thought it was really cute. They did have a couple of other cat plates there. I did not pick them up because I'm not sure how collectible they are in our little online resale community. But I figured I would pick these two up and and see. But if you're interested in something like this, definitely let me know. Send me a message or leave me a comment so that I know you're interested and I can pick up some more of these for you. I mean, they're really cute. This one did have its original price tag and it was listed at $24.99. It didn't say what store it was from, but it did have that price tag. Okay, now I was so excited at the other thrift store, I found somebody had donated quite a few children's books, and they are all vintage. I picked up these three Beatrix Potter books. Um, this is obviously The Tale of Peter Rabbit. I thought this would be great for junk journaling, or of course to keep intact. I did not find a date of this, it just said it was the first Danbury printing. Um, and Danbury is the printer. I'm sorry, not Danbury, Cadmus. Ugh, I need more coffee. <laughs> but this is the first Cadmus printing. 
of the Taylor Peter Rabbit, but it is so cute. Of course, the art is amazing. You know, it's not in pristine condition, but it's great. I just love, love Beatrix Potter. These animals are so stinking cute. I won't show you every page, so I'm going to stop on that. Perfect for Mother's Day. <laughs> okay, I also picked up this book from Beatrix Potter. This is the story of Miss Moppet. And it's a story of a kitten. I believe some of these books were from the library. And that's why there's um, some black markings in them. But look at this. This book and the story of the fierce bad rabbit, neither of them had copyright dates. So I'm going to have to do a little bit of research and find out uh, when these were printed. But look how cute. Okay, I'll stop on that. Poor kitty. Oh, look. The kitty ran into the cupboard. Oh, little ouchie. But these, and all the pages are intact. It's, you know, it's in good condition for its age, for sure. And again, something you could use for junk journaling or you know, to add to your collection. I think everyone should have a Beatrix Potter collection. Okay, this one, it is missing um, this first introductory page, I guess you could say. Um, part of it's missing, at least. But other than that, it is intact. I, I need to read this one. If I read it as a child, I don't remember a bad rabbit. Oh, look, I guess he's stealing from another rabbit. So not cool. Yeah. That's what he's doing. I hope he learns his lesson. Again, the art, perfect. Perfect for junk journaling. If you're into ephemera, this, this is for you. I'm going to stop. It's so hard to stop when you've got pictures like that. Okay. I also picked up this book. This is from, or by Beverly Cleary. And it is from, I believe this is from the 50s. I know it. I know it says it in here. Oh, I'm sorry. 1961. I won't go through it all, but again, amazing graphics, really cute photos or drawings. Um, look at that cat. It's just, it's cute. I, I actually read the story and I love it. I also picked up this cat's book. I believe this is from the 80s. Pretty sure it is. Let's see if I'm right or not. I don't see a date. Oh, 76. Okay. There were two from the 80s in this stack. So I'll have to go through this quickly so I can show you. But again, look at the graphics. Look at these. Look at this cat. Let's go back to that. Where'd it go? Poor thing. What? He's so scared. <laughs> Oh, poor kitty. Oh, look, that cat's scared too. Perfect, perfect for junk journaling. If you want to go that route. Again, I, I probably would keep these intact. But I haven't started junk journaling yet, so maybe once I do, I would think otherwise. Um, this one is called There Was a Cat. This is from 1961. Look at the graphics here. Oh, why the cat falls on his feet. There's a kitty and a, ooh, and a gypsy lady. That's cool. Let's do another picture here. The cat and the sparrow. How stinking cute is that? Love, love, love. I spent quite a while um, going through the books, and there was a lot of digging. I also brought two more nails digging through the books at this thrift store, but it was definitely worth it. Okay, this one, Cat Calls, is from the 80s. I do remember that now. Trying to find the date. Where was the date? It probably doesn't matter to you guys, but now I've got to find it. Oh, 1988. So this is a book just with information about cats, famous cats, and their names. I just thought it was really cool. It has literary cats and cats that belong to famous people. Oh, legendary cats. Here we go. Ooh, Bastet. My favorite Egyptian cat. 
Oh, look at that. So cute. <laughs> look at that cat. That, that's a fat cat, obviously. How cute. I guess he broke the record for being the largest cat. How funny. Okay, this one was precious. This one is called Minette. And I believe this is from the 60s. 1959, I was close. <laughs> Again, the graphics are so adorable. I'll get the cat and the fish. If any of you are interested in any of these books in particular, definitely let me know. I'm not sure if I will sell them as a lot yet. I have a few other uh, vintage children's books that I kind of need to go through and decide. If you're interested um, in me putting them in a live sale, definitely know that. let me know that too. I have to, to price them and kind of see what they go for because some of these are in really good shape. Okay, this one is about a bloodhound and he can't smell, which of course... It's very important if you're a bloodhound. His name is Gabriel Wrinkles. I just thought he was so adorable. Look at this guy. The artwork is, is amazing. There he is with a skunk. I guess he can't smell the skunk, so that's good. Just another cute, cute, cute book. Okay, this one I absolutely fell in love with. The cover. The stray. Look at that pink and white. Um, it's obviously about a stray dog. I haven't read it, but I'm sure I will. Uh, this came out in 1973. Oh, and it's from the Girl Stuff series. Okay. I guess it's a series of girls' books, but look at that fabulous fashion. I love this style of art. It's so cool. Oh, this is from an elementary school. So, yeah, I was right. A lot of these are library books. Don't let the dog out. Look at the clothes. That mom is so cool. Definitely late 60s vibes here. I just love it. And then the last one is this book called Tough Guy. Obviously about a cat. The graphics on this one are so good. This is from 1953. Go through a couple more pages just so you can see how awesome these are. I thought about keeping this one for myself and starting junk journaling with it. I don't know if I'm going to do that yet. So for sure let me know if this is something that you're interested in. So cute. Okay guys, I hope I didn't bore you too much with the books. But I was just excited and I wanted to show them to you. I believe I got 12 books total. And again, I really appreciate everyone's support. I was so excited to do my drawing yesterday for reaching 350 followers. So congratulations again, Annette. Your fair lamp is on the way. Okay, guys, thank you for watching and have a great day. Bye. Yeah.